In this video, I'm going to be testing three Nintendo Switch games with a Wii Remote, then three more with a Nunchuck 2, and we'll be seeing how well each game can be played. The Wii Remote doesn't natively work on the Switch, so to get it working I had to connect it to my 8-bit Do adapter, which allows the Wii Remote to act as a Pro Controller. Obviously, a Wii Remote has less input options than even a single Joy-Con, so it isn't going to work well for most games, but that's why I figured it would be interesting to see which games work and which don't. As I said earlier, I will be using the Wii Remote with a nunchuck as well later on, and that might make some games a bit easier to play, in particular 3D games. One last thing before we start, I won't be able to use any motion controls, despite this being a Wii Remote, due to the adapter not being able to read the motion inputs from the Wii Remotes, but most games don't really require them anyway. Alright, let's start with Mario Odyssey. So when I initially tested Mario Odyssey, I wasn't able to grin pound or dive since the default button layout didn't have access to the triggers. However, after remapping the controls and settings, it had access to all of Mario's basic moves. The game honestly didn't feel too bad, despite playing with a D-pad, which is possible since the adapter makes the D-pad function as an analog stick. Speaking of analog sticks, the lack of a right stick meant I couldn't rotate the camera at all, which was a little irritating, but the game did an alright job of managing it for me. But only in open areas, since in smaller sub areas it was a bit hard to see where to go. It really became an issue when entering one of the tank enemies though. I couldn't aim at this wall I had to shoot so I could climb up it. There might be a way to skip it using some advanced techniques or something, but doing it the intended way is not possible. Mario Odyssey is somewhat playable, but the lack of camera controls makes it much tougher than it needs to be. If you've ever played Sonic Mania, or another 2D Sonic game, you know you only really need a D-pad and one other button to play, so it's no surprise Sonic Mania works perfectly. I actually played my first ever Sonic game, Sonic 2 for Wii Virtual Console, with a sideways Wii Remote, so this feels perfectly natural for me. This is completely playable. Next up was Snipper Clips. When I first started playing, I had access to all the controls except for rotating my character, since the L and R buttons aren't accessible by default. So, like Odyssey, I had to remount the controls so I could use them. Due to the Wii Remote having less buttons than other controllers, I had to get a bit creative with the button placement. L and R were mapped to the A and 1 buttons, which sounds a bit uncomfortable, but after a bit of use it felt okay. The, the button to swap between characters is usually X, but I had to map it to the plus button since all other buttons were already mapped to something. This meant I had to stretch my thumb quite far to press it, which was annoying, but since this game is as in for two players, in co-op you wouldn't need to press this button. The lack of an analog stick means you can't make as precise movements as you would with one, but it doesn't stop you from doing anything, it just might make some situations a bit tougher. Snipper Clips is completely playable, but it just isn't as comfortable to play than with another controller. Okay, I think it's time to plug in the nunchuck and see how that works with some Switch games. For Breath of the Wild, I had to remount my controls once again because I wasn't able to access a few things like my shield, bow and crouching, and the buttons to attack and jump were initially mapped to 1 and 2, which were quite awkward to reach since they were placed low down on the Wii remote. After a quick trip to the settings though, the controls were much more comfortable and had access to a few more things. However, like Odyssey, I still couldn't rotate the camera around due to the lack of a right stick, but I also wouldn't adjust on its own, being locked into a single direction. Luckily, I could just use the focus button, which I mapped to downwards on the D-pad, to recenter the camera, so navigating the world wasn't too difficult. This didn't solve everything though, since I tried to use my bow at one point, but I couldn't aim with it since I couldn't use the right stick or motion controls. Same goes for switching rooms, which you can do by bringing up a menu and moving the right stick, which I didn't have. I tried doing one of the shrines, which went smoothly, but I also tried another one which required motion controls, which isn't supported by the adapter. Many shrines also require the use of runes and aiming at things, which isn't possible with this setup. Breath of the Wild does not work well with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo. Navigating the world, doing basic combat, and particularly shrines work alright, but anything that requires different runes, aiming at things, or anything else that uses motion controls or the right stick won't be possible, or at least easy. It's time for a Wii game, on the Switch, with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Does it work well? Yeah. So next I played Super Mario Galaxy for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Obviously, I couldn't perform the spin attack by shaking the remote like in the original game, but 3D All-Stars maps the spin attack to buttons, so I could just use that. Spinning was mapped to 1 and 2 by default, which wasn't convenient, 
and I couldn't crouch or long jump at all, but after a bit of remapping, I could control Mario just like in the original game for the Wii, except I had to press B to spin instead of shaking the remote. Unfortunately, due to the inability to use motion controls and the Switch's lack of a sensor bar, I was unable to move the star pointer across the screen. This wasn't a huge deal in the level I was playing here, but it's very important in some other levels, such as the ones with pool stars that you're required to point at. It's not just an issue within the levels though, most of the buttons throughout the game's menus require you to press on them with the pointer, including the save and level select screens. I was only able to play by temporarily switching over to my Pro Controller, which could control the pointer. So due to this issue, Mario Galaxy on the Switch is basically unplayable with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck, due to the inability to control the cursor. If the adapter was able to send the Wii Remote's motion inputs to the Switch, then this game would work perfectly since the cursor is controlled using a gyro with other controllers, which later Wii Remote models like this one have. So the reason the game doesn't work well is more a limitation with the adapter rather than the controller itself. Okay, so the last game I played was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like Galaxy, the original version of this game, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, supported the Wii Remote and Nunchuck control scheme. Right away, I had access to all the buttons I needed for the game, but the placement was a little bit strange. R, the button used for drifting, was mapped to the tiny C button on the back of the nunchuck by default, but once I swapped it with B and B became C, then the controls are comfortable. The controls aren't the exact same as they were on the Wii U, since braking and drifting were shared by the same button there, but the game is still totally playable. The Wii Remote and nunchuck work great with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And there you have it, six different Switch games played with either a Wii Remote on its own or a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Thanks for sticking till the end, I hope you enjoyed it. I haven't really done videos in this style with post commentary and as much editing before, I wanted to try something a little bit different, but if you enjoyed it then I'll be happy to make more, I have some video ideas in mind. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.